Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, this is a new week, praise God. And I know that the Spirit of God has great things in store for you this week. Now, as we go on this broadcast, I want you to open your heart and open your ears to hear not just what I'm sharing with you, but what the Lord is saying to you. I always say this on this broadcast. We are creating an atmosphere for God to speak to you. So everything I share with you here is to give you an opportunity to go beyond me and hear what the Lord is saying in the midst of my words. Now, as I trust God to bring forth his truth, I trust you to open your heart and I trust him also where you are concerned to speak to you. Praise God. So open your heart with faith and you will see the wonders of God in your life. Trust me, it's going to be a great week. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, like we always do on this broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith. Now, release your faith. How do you release your faith? I'll tell you in case you've not heard me say it before. By believing that the things you're about to say will surely come to pass. That's how you release your faith. Because <laughs> what I'm going to say is right. And then I believe that it's going to come to pass. With that attitude right now, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I demand today my daily bread. And I receive it from you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And that's all. And trust the Lord who has heard you. He will bring it to pass. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for today. Let your word flow freely in the hearts of everyone listening. And wherever and whenever this message is going to be heard, let an understanding come to the hearers. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Now we are still on our topic, the wisdom of God's word. Now let's go back to our theme, our main scripture for what I've been sharing with you on. I told you, we'll keep reading that scripture until you get it. <laughs> it's good. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. From verse 1 to 3. It says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, he is telling you, hey, push these things aside. Now, you know, you know what it means by malice. You know what it is. See, you're dealing with people in your thoughts. You create malice. It says, lay it aside. It doesn't matter what someone has done to you. In your approach to things, you have to, first of all, lay aside that malice in your heart. See, malice, is, is, malice comes to your own heart. Not even in the person's action. Malice is in your heart where the person is concerned. It may be as a result of what the person has done to you, okay? Yes, the person may have done bad to you, I understand that. But then you are the one that must guard your own heart. Guard it with, your, with, with everything you've got. David said to Solomon, his son, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. Guard it. Why? You will soon see why. So lay aside all malice, lay aside all deceit. Deceit is in your heart also. The intention to mislead is deceit. The intention to mislead. Now that's your intention. So it's expressed in words and actions, okay? So you, you tell somebody, I'm going to Susan, so and so place me why this is where you really intend to go. Now, why did you say that? You had the intention in your heart to mislead the person. See, that's the seat. You, 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 you are trying to convince someone concerning some. Now, even pastors even do use the seat when they preach the gospel. 
Now, their hearts, they want to get people to believe. And so they think, um, if, we, if we set up this thing, now, that if we set up this thing so that the people will think this is what it is. See, that heart, that intention to mislead is deceit. See? So it says, lay it aside. Now, those things, watch this now. Lay aside deceit, hypocrisy. You know what that means? Living different from the real self. See, you have a challenge, but then you want everybody to make to feel you, you are perfect. And then you step into that realm of hypocrisy. It will destroy your life. But number one, it will not give you the opportunity to really receive salvation. See? So it says, lay aside that hypocrisy. This is who you are. Own up to it. And trust God for a change. Because the reason you're hiding it is because you know it's wrong. You know it's bad. Get out of that realm. Envy, it's in your heart. See, all these things have to do with your heart. Feeling you wouldn't just accept it as someone else is better than you. So you, you begin to let that affect your behavior towards that person or even other people. So you envy them, but you will not accept it. Get it out of your heart. Envy and all evil speaking. See, all these things in your heart will culminate in evil speaking. Because now you begin to lie. You begin to, to bring down people with your words and all those things. You see, he says, lay them aside. Then look at what he says next. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If you don't get these things out, you it will it's surely going to affect your growth. Because God wants you to receive the sincere or the pure word. The pure word. Now he goes on to say in the next verse, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If you have tasted, now I've talked extensively on this, that um, coming to that point where you see that God is gracious, it means you have entered a realm where you have experienced God. You, you bear the testimony that you have experienced God. So have an experienced God in what light? In the goodness of God. You have seen God do amazing things in your life. Now he says, lay this aside so that you receive the sincere word. First, God reveals himself to you. Then you know him. Now that's how it works. Now let me show you a scripture in Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah, brother Jeremiah, praise God. Jeremiah chapter 9. Now, I want to show you something God said here. Verse 23. Let's start from verse 23. It says, Thus says the Lord. Now, this is God speaking. This is not a man speaking what he thinks about God. This is a man, of course. A man is writing. A man wrote the book of Jeremiah, okay? Now, but then he, he is writing what he heard God say to him. So he's quoting God here. He says, Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. No matter how wise you are, don't get too excited about your wisdom. See, because it takes just one act of God to show how foolish your wisdom is. Praise God, that's the truth. So don't, don't, don't glory in your wisdom. Say, let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. All these things can disappear in a second. But let him who glories, glory in this, that he understands and knows me. Now God says this is the only thing that is constant in life. This is the only thing that will be permanent in your life. And what is that? The knowledge and understanding of who God is. Hmm. <laughs> the only thing that is going to be permanent in your life, when I mean permanent in your life, whether you are here or whether in heaven or in hell, the only thing that will be permanent in your life is the understanding and the knowledge 
of God. Now God gives us, yeah, sorry, the God gave us um, something here that we should look at. It says that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord first, that I am the Lord. Then it says, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. I'm the Lord who loves to exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. In the earth, yeah. Now remember what Peter told us. He says, receive the pure word of the Lord so that you will grow. Now, that pure word of the Lord comes from this uh, personality of God. That God is saying, your, your, your glory, the only reason you must glory is that you understand his person. You know his person. That this God, he loves to exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. He, now he loves to exercise it. I was sharing last week Thursday in, in our fellowship meeting. Exercising means exerting, putting more pressure. It, it, the same way you go to the gym, you lift weights. Now, you don't lift little weights that are easy for you. You're not exercising. You see, you start from the little ones and then you grow. When you feel, okay, I think this is, this is normal for me. Now you go to bigger ones and you try, oh, I no, no, I've got to lift this thing. I must lift this thing. And then you try, finally you're able to lift it. Whoa, okay, good. I'm going to try it again. Now what are you doing? You're exercising. You're exercising your strength. You're exercising your muscles. Now, the more you exercise, the more you realize the great things that you didn't previously know you could do. See, but exercise puts pressure on yourself until you are able to do it. You see that now? The same thing with every other, other spot. Now God says he loves to exercise loving kindness. Now that's one thing about God you need to understand. Not just loving kindness. He also loves to exercise judgment. Then he also loves to exercise righteousness. You see the combination of these three things. They truly define the personality of God. If you take one alone, you would get a funny picture or idea of the personality of God. You must combine these three things. Now, what does it mean to exercise loving kindness? Now, you see, uh, sometimes as, as a teacher of God's word, it's difficult to explain certain things to people. There are experiences, experiences with God that some of us have heard that it's difficult um, talking about them. We, there are situations we've dealt with and you, you, you were helped by God. Now, not just when I mean helped by God, not just something um, God personally helped you to, to achieve. No, no, I'm talking about dealing with people. See, there are cases we handle and God gave us wisdom, specific wisdom for those particular cases to navigate them and, and bring forth his righteousness. And by the time you are done, you go, wow. Huh. Then you sit back and you're excited that you were able to find a way out of this situation. But then you knew you were mightily helped by God. You knew it. But then it becomes difficult to teach it. Why? Because a lot of people are going to misunderstand it. See? Now, since we, we started this teaching, this series on the, the, the wisdom of God's word, there are things the Spirit of God has been prompting in my heart. But I, I, I keep going, is it, hold on, Lord. <laughs> hold on. See, because that's the core of what I know the Lord wants us to talk about. But I, I just keep feeling we, we need to lay certain foundations. We need to lay certain foundations. 
Why? Because there are people who will take the word of God out of context. You see, and then they run with the wrong information because they themselves have not been able to lay aside the things Peter spoke about. See. Peter was careful to say, lay aside all these things. Now, it doesn't matter what anyone has done to you. I'll give you an example. You may be, um, you may be, uh, let me put this, let me look for something almost permanent to use. You may be a divorcee and, and maybe you're a lady or you're a, you're, a, you're a man and your wife divorced you or your husband divorced you and they put in so much stress. You know what I mean by that? They, they were wicked to you. I think I told you this before. The reason God hates divorce is because of the cruelty that, that comes up when people are going through divorce. You hardly find divorce that they were able to settle. There are, but you hardly find them. There's always a cruel side of divorce and that's the thing that God hates because you will force God to judge you on that matter. And you may not be guiltless. Yet, you were the one that was wronged. But your response can put you in trouble with God. See? Because, because now, in, in talking about God's, God exercising loving kindness, I was saying, maybe you're there and someone was cruel to you. And you just feel, now this thing happens to believers. Because someone has wronged you so bad, you expect that the person should be judged by God. So you, you find yourself as a lady, maybe your husband left you, divorced you, and you've looked at it, you couldn't tell what you did wrong, okay? And now he's gotten married to someone else, see? Now you expect to hear stories that he's suffering. You expect to hear stories that the lady he got married to is dealing with him. You, you just want to like, let him just see that he was cruel and he was wicked. Let God just show him. Now, do you know, you, you, you can be expecting all that and then you're the one that is wrong now. Why? Because your expectation is just showing you don't understand God, that he is one who loves to exercise loving kindness. So even to that your husband that left you or even to that your wife that left you, you don't understand that God looks at them and he's looking for avenues to exercise loving kindness. So the fact that they left you doesn't automatically mean that their, life will be, that their lives will be ruined. So your expectation of their life being ruined is wrong. You see? No, Pastor, Pastor Tupo, you don't understand. If you, if, if you know what this person did to him, God will be partial not to, not to deal with that person. See, now that's what you think. Now, why are you thinking that way? I'm sorry to tell you. There is malice in your heart. Yes, there is. Now, you may justify it by thinking if this person have done me right, why would I be having malice? But you see, the action have just revealed the capacity of your heart. Your heart have the capacity to keep malice. And that malice in your heart will now begin to affect the way you see God. And that itself is now going to begin to reveal that you have a problem in your knowledge of God. And if you have a problem in your knowledge of God, your faith is wrong. So your expectation will be wrong. And what does that tell you? Your manifestation too cannot be trusted. Wow. My time is up. Praise God. You see, this week, take a hold of these things I'm sharing with you and help yourself. So what do I do then? I'll tell you tomorrow, praise <laughs> God. Oh, Father, we bless you. It is your word that washes us. 
it washes us. And so that we will behold your glory and exactly be the way you are. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.